guys are looking for? File 43, number 6. video earlier of this chick woman basically um, talking about she was responding to an Edomite and the Edomite was like why are we protesting it was dealing with them at the time um, and she was basically like why should we waste our time basically trying to fight for y'all called y'all to fight for us basically I look at it as a sign of Jake starting to give up on society which is good and uh so we'll talk about that a little bit. How the Lord said that part of our curse is we're going to be in our oppression. Part of our oppression is that we're going to realize that society ain't for you and you need to let go of this. That's it. So right now, that's all I got. Just going to hit me. I'm going to have y'all run this. Um, you know, whatever y'all got, y'all. You, uh, you know, line? Yeah. Okay. Y'all move down like this. Basically saying when we come out here and prophesy, 
That is the best thing. Getting you back to your house, child, and letting go of the society just saying you fuck this world, that's, that's basically your salvation right now. So once you reach that status, just know you in a good position. In fact, if you you hesitant about this, you can't fully say, yeah, man, the hell with this world and everything. Because yeah. the scriptures talk about us being dead to the world. In fact, can one of y'all brothers find that for me? Can you find that for me? I think Paul talked about being dead to the world. Find that for me. You got that for me. This is uh, first break. This is first break. It's chapter 14 and verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in the unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto the house. For no man understandeth him how be in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. So when you prophesy, exhortate, bring a comfort, right? So the goal is prophecy. And the goal, ultimately for you, is to let go of this world and come to your house. Okay? If you can't fully say right now, no matter how long you've been in the truth, I'm willing to let everything in this world go to hell with it all. Okay, you gotta examine yourself. I'm not saying you're supposed to automatically do it, you're doing the truth, you ain't, you ain't been in that long, only year, or whatever. That's what you're supposed to grow, is because it takes faith, right? Because you all, you all may still have some attachments to this world. Seeing Jake starting to let go, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Because it means that they've given up. And as you should, all right? Because our people have already given this society our body and soul and many lives, okay? Many go across, many go across the sea to fight a war that does not concern them because they believe that they're doing some good and they believe that their sacrifice will, will profit their offspring their offspring in the society, and they're realizing that it's a joke. Okay, it's a joke. In fact, okay. that's good that you're starting to give up. Okay, that's a good thing. When you come back to the Lord, as the scripture says, you're dead to this world. That's the ultimate peak mentality, man. You don't know why? Because you can't be phased by anything. You're not moved by anything. You're not. You're not who the president is, you're not worried about what direction your country is going, you're giving it up, you're done, you're done, you're done with it. And the scriptures give us the key to how to, to attain that level of, of maturity. Okay? One, you gotta have faith, two, the spirit gotta be dealing No pictures, please. You got that for me, brother? Just find that. Kyle, was it uh were you talking about Colossians 2 and 20? Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever it says that. Okay. So this is the uh, book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 20. It says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Hamashiach from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? It says, Which all are to perish, so like you touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will, worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any order to the satisfying of the flesh. Right, so according to the scriptures, man, you're dead to this world if you're with the Lord because you're living in him now, right? And when you study our ancestors, they didn't call their place home, okay? They called themselves the pilgrims. So like if you ask them their age, they would say, uh, this is, uh, so like if you ask me my age, I would tell you, oh, this is, uh, this year would make, this year would make 32 years in my pilgrimage. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have a home. But you might say, well, look, you're in America, this is your home. No, it's not. Because my ancestors was always seeking that place, so we're seeking that place as well. Alright, 
down to verse 20 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 24, sorry. Uh, but if all prophesy, if there come in one that believe in God, and one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. Yeah. Uh, verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, said the Lord. Okay. It's like verse 31. Uh, verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. So you see, see what prophecy does? It says that all may learn and all may be comforted by prophesying. When you prophesying that this place is going to be destroyed and that we got a kingdom to come, what's left to build on this side? What's left to take root and to hold fast on this side? There's nothing. Everything you're doing is for the future. There's the treasures in heaven. That's your spiritual bank account. Because in this society, you may be concerned about building up your bank account and get some savings going. But then you understand what's, what's more important is to a spiritual bank account than heaven. So you no longer return, you no longer faith and, and afraid by hearing the dollars the last Because you're like, wait a minute, I got some money and some stocks and some real estate. The dollar collapse, what does that mean for me? See, if you had faith and you understood the prophecy, you wouldn't be moved by that. But if you move by that, that's because you still got hope on your side. The more you start to let go, believe it or not, and basically say, you know what, I, I used to curb it, hell with all of this. Guess what, that's a good sign that you could be part of the elect. Because that means you, you, you acknowledge it that no matter what you do, no matter if you follow this man's laws to a T, okay, it does not benefit you, it have not benefited our people. Look at it this way, you still fight to be treated like a regular citizen. You're fighting to have basic rights that if you get pulled over from the cop, that, that you get due justice just like everybody else. But in fact, you know it's different. You know it's so different that it's a habit now to go live. Somebody's going live somewhere. Because you got to hold these devils accountable because the habit is that they're allowed, right? And they'll kill you, right? So you fight literally just to be treated like a, a regular citizen because according to their books, you are considered a second class citizen. And you're like, man, I don't know how much proven we gotta do to you. They, they're not a man in their word. That's nothing you find out about Esau either. They're not a man in their word, man. You know? Yeah, they, they, you know, yeah, they tell you, oh, uh, cause you, you believe it, right? They tell you that they don't judge based off of their cost. They judge off your status. If you finish school or serve in the military, you know, they don't look at you, they look, they look at your status. You know, you find out that's a damn lie. Because you can have your army uniform on, uniform on and still be treated like a second class citizen. You can make your way over to the neighborhoods, right? Obviously, you got there by following the rules. You still get treated like shit. They still don't want you. Right? So you find out that this man don't really believe what he's saying. They make you believe that we judge according to who you are, not what you look like. And that, uh, and that, uh, we don't judge our color or, you know what I'm saying? And you find out that's a damn lie. Okay, that's a damn lie. Like the woman said, she said, y'all don't protest for us when, when, when there's a law being passed that's gonna affect us. Y'all don't go out and protest. Y'all expect us to fight for you when there's something that's gonna be a pass that's gonna affect you because when it's affecting you, then you want, you know, then it's a problem. But if it's affecting us, it's not a problem, right? So that's the importance of the prophecy because when you realize the nitty gritty is that this place is gonna be destroyed. There's nothing left to care about this world. I don't, I don't, I can't name you one mayor. I could barely name you three presidents, right? I can't, I, I, I barely know the history dealing with America as far as the presidents and the, the such and such crisis, the Great Depression. I, I barely understand it because I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking in the, I'm like, okay, does that affect anything now? I barely care about that, but they're like, no, you got to know American history. Look, I know this place going to be destroyed. Right. I know enough history to know that y'all a bunch of hypocrites, y'all liars, y'all don't do what y'all say, and the dollar's going to collect. Okay. Uh, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 
6 and verse 19 through 20. It says, lay, up, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, when moth and rust do it corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or nor steal. That takes belief. Because Jake put their they put their all in their life, right? And that's how they get caught up. Because they when they say like they lose that, right? And look at uh, Usain Bolt, for example, who's a proud example. Yeah, that's fucked up what happened to him. Right? But just imagine that his whole life saved. Gone. In an instant. In an instant. But he probably was laid back and thought he was secure. Like, yeah, I got nothing to worry about. But then he got then he got that reality that, you know, though he's in Jamaica or wherever he's at, you still have nothing guaranteed on this side. Nothing is guaranteed. So much so that it's it, it's just talk that you gotta, you know, put your head, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because uh, uh, evil times are inevitable. That's according to the scripture. get a little long-winded but this is second Peter chapter 3 starting at the uh, ninth verse it says the Lord Yahweh is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us to us work not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance so Yahweh don't want to see any Israelite perish but he wants to see you repent and come back right but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works, uh, the works that are therein shall be burnt. So the Lord going to the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, He going to destroy this place. Here's the point, right? It says, "See then that all these things shall be dissolved." What manners of persons ye ought to be in all holiness, conversation, and godliness. Yeah. So you know that this place is going to be destroyed. You see the dollar crumbling. Things are, are, are perishing all around you. You know what I'm saying? You know, come back to your Hashem Yamashai, you know. You you know, uh, 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 get on the form of these scriptures. Our message to you is the message that Yahushai gave us. The gold is Society is not for you. It, 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 you have there is no future here because if that was the case, the Lord would have told us. Those particular particular spots of uh, situations in history where the Lord told us how long we're gonna be in captivity. Okay? And like Babylon, the Lord said 70 years, she made that short. But he said, this is got a certain this, this about the time, so build your house, right? Other than that, he never told us to find a home, make it your home, because it's not your home. You don't have it. Okay? We're, we're all pilgrims, and that's the mindset you gotta have. So, we're gonna tell you, let go of this world. Let go of this society. Don't feel ashamed of it. You know, don't, 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 don't let these all make you think like, oh, that's unpatriarchal. What is it? Unpatriarchy or something? You ain't a real patriot. Don't be a patriot. Be a patriot for the truth. Be a patriot for the truth. This is the scriptures. Okay, because being a pet patriot for this society has proven to be null and void and not worthwhile at all to the, to the veterans, to the seniors. It's just not worth it. And at the end of the day, you still get screwed. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 7. Truly, the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Right. right. So though you live in, things may be going good, you see in the sun, right? It says, though a man may live many years, let him remember the days of darkness, for there be many, because the hard times are in them. So you're not 
not just walking around here in La La Land and thinking that the police and prosper. Because hard times are inevitable. Okay, scripture says there's a time and place for everything. We never actually lived through a famine. Like, when that was normal back then. You never know when a famine would hit or whatever. And then you had to adjust accordingly. You know what I'm saying? You had to adjust your life accordingly. Because the famine may be a few months or even a few years. Matthew, the sixth chapter, just jump in at verse 31, it reads, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, so I can, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And there are many of our people who struggle with anxiety, depression, okay, worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. Hey, you don't even need to put that amount of stress on yourself, okay? Those of us who are on this side of the fence, okay? Hey, we let go of all these mortal thoughts, all right? Because there ain't no need to worry about tomorrow because you don't even know you're gonna see it, actually, okay? So, you know, word to the wise out there, right? So, it's best for you to let go of the things of this world because it's all temporal anyway. You know, it's not meant to last, and, and, and your, your your physical flesh is not meant to last either. So what you got now, you ain't carrying this on to the other side anyway, right? The wicked Egyptians tried that. It didn't work, okay? That's all right. It's the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7 it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Exactly. So you be as right, you sober. Right. This is what you're talking about, like being drunk, right? You're talking about mentally, right? Because when you when you drunk with wine, you, you're in a time of birth, you think all is well. And that's really when you drink. You got a lot of hard times, and you take a hard time. It's a type of relief or joy. Okay, and that could be a distraction, right? It's just like people who, like the rappers and celebrities, they got so much guilt on them, they have to keep themselves constantly intoxicated and distracted because if they sit, they do nothing but reflect on how they got there and it becomes a burden to them because they know they're guilty. So instead, they keep themselves distracted, okay? When you sober, you're looking at all around you. You're looking at, you're looking at what's in front of you. And you, you, you're mindful of what's happening. A lot of people today just choose to, I don't watch the news anymore, it's too depressing. It's just too, too, too much bad, you know what I'm saying? And they choose, they say, in order for, especially women, you know, like Brother Benjamin, you got people so anxiety and so concerned about tomorrow, and that's, that's, that's mainly women, you know what I'm saying? They, it's the Bible, it's about everything they do is for the sake of survival, okay? If the prices go up 30 cents, because they're thinking about will I be able to afford this in the next few months? Is the food going to be here in the next few months? Right? And 
got some, some men who think like that too and concerned about that. But the Lord says, look, I'm going to take care of you. And that's what the scriptures, it builds you up to that faith to be like that. Because otherwise, it, and that's why you can learn so much from nature. Okay? Because they, they could, right? I got, I got a birdie friend. I made a nest right there on my life, right? My mind, my first thought was, okay, good. I want to help her. And I sat there, I said, her don't need my help. So the nest by itself, the little clock is by itself, no need. Right? So the best I said was, well, I at least wanted to feel comfortable here. I wanted to come back. You know what I'm saying? But that's the way you think. What is the animal thing? Because if the bird can speak, the bird like, I need your food. You know, I did all this. I put the nest, I'm taking care of it. Lord God. And then, and then, uh, man, I'm pretty sure the bird would appreciate it. He oh, yeah. Me. But I used to be like, man, I want to help him. But then I thought, don't need my help. It don't need me. It just, let me occupy your space. Cool. You got it. But, but that shows you that if you study the animal, like the, even the Lord talking about the, the, the sparrows, right? They're not, they not concerned about the things we concerned about. And the Lord said that we're better than them. So that's, that's, a, that's faith. And it, 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 you gotta grow into it, okay? But that's what, that's really what fear is, and it's not knowing. Like, you wanna secure, you wanna be able to secure something to say, I know this will be here tomorrow, I know this will survive for the next two weeks, for the next two months. The Lord knows that. But the faith is for you to say, I don't know how, but I know the Lord will survive for me. That's how the animals move, that's how the birds move. They're not, they're not worried, man. They do what they do, and they know the Lord will take okay. it. Uh, it's Job 12 and 7, and it reads, But well, as now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fish of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these, that the hand of the Lord have brought this. But it was revealed to him, right? 
So, yeah, in that case, stock up. Use your wisdom, because it was revealed to you that you could find it. But that's not going to always be the case. Hey. Run, run, we got access to the life of all sources. We shouldn't concern ourselves so much with, uh, with the, you know, the flesh is Learn to walk in the spirit. Wow. Hebrew chapter 11, starting at the first verse. It says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the word, the worlds were framed by the word of God Yahweh, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God, Yahweh, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God, Yahweh, testified of his gifts, and, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was, tra was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God Yahweh had translated him for before, before his translation. He had his testimony that he pleased God Yahweh. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God Yahweh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah being warned of God, Yahweh of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous, righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should have received for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs of, I'm sorry, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had fountains, whose builder and maker is God Yahweh. I'm not gonna lie to you. I got I got friends in the world that, that, that hate that 
before thine eyes and thou shalt not eat thereof thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies and thou shalt have none to rescue them thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thy hand fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all the way. So only oppressed and crushed all the way. When it's tough, those are the curses by the way that we have to suffer. So when it's saying your house is going to be slain before you and you ain't going to eat that uh, and your lambs or whatever, that means you're getting robbed of your, your suffering. That's, that's humiliating, that's embarrassing. For, some, for another nation to come on your land, like that, so they take that, we don't chop that up. Here it is, you are in the joys, and your brand is, but it's deep for your enemies, it's deep for your other nation. That's lost of money, that's lost of profit. That means you're a slave. And then it goes on to say, your sons and your daughters, you know that that actually happened to us, right? There's no one else on the planet that you can actually say that happened to our people. Your children, your offspring, your youth is sent off as slaves to make another the devil rich and wealthy. Okay, your family is good. Those are the curses of the said you shall be only a friend. That's the society we live in. So that, that Jake, when she went off, she, she started to acknowledge that like, fuck it, fuck you. You don't fight for us. You want us to fight for you, why should we? You know, this 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 country is just corrupt. You don't care about your citizens. So she started to just say, fuck it, because you're not supposed to. In this society, you, you only oppress. So what is there to fight for? You know? What is there to believe in when they don't uphold those morals they teach? They'll tell you on the job, all right? They really have you believe that you're making a difference. But they'll, they'll let your ass go against them. Here it is, you don't work five years, but you probably made enough of their profits. You probably helped them with algorithms to help sales and all that. But they'll let you go. And you were like, wait a minute, you sold me a dream, basically. You basically had me believe that one day I could be a partner, I could own this. And now the position is there, and you're going to give it to Bob, and he don't know the truth. And I've been here since the beginning. Yeah, how many Jakes have got that reality check in the corner? Yeah. In fact, there was a black woman, there was a white woman in NASA who was uh, supposed to go on some trips to space. And she, all her grades were fine. She was doing everything right, right? They gave it to an Edomite on, on purpose just because they didn't want her, you know, going up there. I forgot what her name is. Right? Because they said we don't want, because this is going to be like one of the first launches in history or whatever. And we don't want, they basically don't want so they passed her up into you know, and all she could do was cry about it. All she could do was cry about it. Right? So, how many wake-up calls do, you, do our people really need to realize this is not our home? Yeah. 
33 and 6. Wisdom and knowledge should be the ability of the times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Egypt. 
therefore shall the shame of the Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Not 
have it. Okay. So I'm living in reality. They can live in fantasy all uh, uh, You know what I'm saying? You can't do it. Right? I would be you lying to yourself by telling yourself that. Hey, just like in that movie of living in the time of the The chick did not want to go anything. She just wanted to walk by the machine. And eventually that that time of food, like don't you want to see him? I don't want to know nothing. And then she ratted him out because he's doing too much digging. They just want to live in the life and follow the machine. But not many people want to know. I also in that movie with, uh, he had found that other woman, and guess what, this woman did that home. She turned against them and shit, man. You know what I mean? What you do all this women they so-called call themselves the truth going to do? They're going to be like, oh, no. Nah. You know, and they're going to walk out on you. And guess what you're going to happen to you? The woman that turned against, she got put to death, man. She trusted the machine. She, she ran it out the system. Little does she know that just told the machine, I got you. They, the machine basically said, you gonna do what I say, and if there's a problem, y'all both got He was like, nah, man, this ain't it, man. Something, something's wrong. And it's like, you ask too many questions. You know, and you should ask questions. Ask questions. Oh, this is, this is good. Hey, this is a good answer. This is, uh, this is harder for you. Like, you look up, or you choose, like, there's something out there that's real for you. But you got somebody, look at them, come on. I want to know what you And then you got the people responding, why does it matter? Know the truth, stop being lied to. Okay, being a Jew, let's deal with it. No, we can't deal with it. Can't, 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 no, no we, we are because we say we are. We're just black. Okay, well, we go to the scriptures and you see there's a problem. See, that's what made me inquire more. When I saw the apostles out there teaching, and as they were trying to bring out the facts that people wanted to run from, that basically was Then you take it to other people. You know the Bible says it don't matter. Like, well, wait a minute. If you say it, if you want to reject it, I know it's the truth. Yeah. So I'm gonna look at it. You know, and it's right in your face. So this is, you know, this is part of letting go. This is how I let this go. Let the whole family fall. Right? You got Jake out there like there's that one Jake in that clip. He got mad. He's like, y'all gonna lead us to the world. Yeah. And I don't want to get blown up. Hey, bro, let the fuck it Let him drop. Let him drop. Let him drop. Because he's that he's concerned. I want to live. And y'all said, y'all lead us in the world with three. That, if that man got on the level that he, that we should, that we all, let him Let him fly. You know what I'm saying? Let him fly. unto him a wise man which built it his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. The, earth, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you you trying to build yourself up in this world, trying to really be something, when you know it's gonna fall according to the prophecies, right? You, you're gonna be destroyed, okay? And, but if you walk into the words and let this place go, to get into these scriptures, to buy by the law, statutes, and commandments, when the tribulations and the troubles come, and you put your faith in the house by Shem Yahweh Shah, you're going to be all right. But you can't be of this world and expect to, to make it when you have by Shem Yahweh Shah, too. You know, you can't serve two masters. Okay?
Isaiah 36 and 18. It says, But where these Hezekiah persuades you, saying, The Lord will deliver us, and any of the gods of the nation that live in his land, out of the hand of the king of Assyria, where are the gods of Amoth and Arphan? Where are the gods of They knew that they had no certain quality. 
level is what should be set level. You can grow spiritually now because while this world is collapsing, you're not phased. You're not phased. You're not concerned about the things that are concerned about, like the retirement age and stuff like that. If you grow, that shit's wicked. But you got people on this job right now, they may be 40, right? They're concerned about the retirement, they're concerned about the social security, they're concerned about their 401k, right? They really just, I know people right now who had to blow their 401k, and they're really panicking because they're like, man, I, I'm 30 something and I gotta start off. That's how they're really sweating, right? Because they, they're trying to make sure I'm secure and they need to get on the game so that they're secure. You don't think like that, man. You don't think like that. Now, if you were that age when you basically they retire in a year or two, guess what? You can see that. I think you might want to put your hand on the retirement. You might take that and put it like, no, I'm going to try to do that. 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 I'm going to try to do because they say you said what now? Sold them a bill of goods because they thought, okay, well, when I turn 58, I got 30 years plus in, I'm going to be straight. And you walk away and you find out that they don't have enough because hyperinflation is starting to set in. So everywhere you go now, whether it be a Walmart or a Target, you know, there's some old dude wanting to give you a car. You know what I mean? Because he, he got to bring his ass back out the work because he doesn't have enough, right? So they sold, sold the bill of goods thinking that they were going to do some travel. Then, uh, you know, they, they was going to take it easy. You know, after 30, 40 years of hard labor, you know, and they come to find out that their sugar has turned to shit. Right? So they, you know what I mean? I mean, so they, they <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, you know, it's going to be some rough going. Just like the brothers going into, it's going to be some dark days. Now, I did have uh, Romans 12, uh, verse 1, and it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High. Remember, by the mercies of the Most High, okay? Not by your own merits, not by your own doings, right? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service, right? The men who have called into this ministry. It be not conformed to this world, and that's what most of them, all these people have done. They've conformed to the ideologies of this fucking ass place, right? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Spirit of the Lord got to be on you. You want to renew your mind. If not, you're still going to be on that goddamn hamster wheel. You fucking go around and around until you just fucking drop. When you die, you're just going to dump your ass out the chair and put somebody else in. Put their time in, and even even when they start. 
start families, man. You see this, man? You know, some of those countries look out for you now because they want you to prosper. This place is not going to prosper. That comes from their ancient customs that we had in the East. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and you, you know, you like, okay, I'm on the goose trail, 40 years old, right? tell you whoever can you know sell X amount will get a bonus, thousand dollar bonus at the end. So you toil, you sweat, congratulations, thank you for making us millions more. Here's your thousand dollar bonus. You get it three hundred dollars. For the seven hundred tax, you know what I'm saying? You know, we gotta take that from you. What? But but thank you for making that million, but you know what? You try harder, you get another three hundred dollars. <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they do it. I used to work for the companies, and they'll do it. They'll tell you fifteen hundred dollars bonus if you reach certain goals, ten is perfect, all that. Basically, you maximizing your profit for you win. Here's your fifteen hundred dollars. Really, you get five hundred, seven hundred, but that's okay. They can pay that because you—they've already did the math. You done what you did. You made the million. So keep pushing. You know, and you ain't gonna do nothing with the 300 but go pay some damn bills. See what I'm saying? But they have you believe you can do it. Do it. Right? But they're not gonna really teach you how to be an entrepreneur. They're not gonna really teach you how to use the system for your benefit. They're not gonna do that. They're gonna tell you to get a job and work the corporate life. No, they're gonna take, first of all, go to college. Right? You get a degree in business just so you can say you got a degree in business. And unless you already got an idea of what you want to do, it's a waste of time. Pretty much. It's a waste. But that's what they tell you, because they make it make you think you look professional and you sound good. I work with people who had degrees in business and science and uh, 
chemistry and freaking all kind of things. And they answer a phone call. You know, the and man is possessing him. One man has to read. And all you should be doing is getting knowledge. Chewing the beat and spitting out the door. Really, really nowadays, you can be self talk You got the discipline and all That's right. And then the business professors that they learn from with their degree, they ain't never started a business themselves. They just read a book. try to withhold that from you because they don't want you to take it and excel it because that spells well maybe in your pockets and they don't want to give out that formula they want to keep it all in-house we know this right so the said consider it fuck this place man the lord give you given us the secrets to wealth right the true riches which is now this society ain't gonna teach you that they still don't even teach you that you're Israelites they tell you you're black they don't teach you the full history they, your history gonna start with America. It's going with slavery. Yeah, slavery. America, right? That's it. In 1776, that's the furthest they go back. Like, it's really like, the only thing you really can do is uh, reading skills, a little bit of math skills, a little bit of like money, money management skills. Right. Uh, yeah, writing. Uh, you might need a second language, and you might need a trade. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need. And if they really want it, they can teach you all that by the age of 12. That's right. And send you out into the world to profit. They don't want to do that. The scriptures teach you that, though. That's right. And this, this whole thing is a bunch of, it's, it's a load of crap. Okay? So you should want to, I done got screwed over. You're supposed to get pissed off. In fact, if you ain't pissed off, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Sirach 26 and 28. It reads, there be two things that grieve my heart, and the third making me angry. A man of war that suffered poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returns from righteousness to sin. The Lord purged such a one for the sword. It, it was basically like, like the uh, man of war that suffered from poverty. Right? You know? that's, that's just complete disrespect, you know? And that's why the scripture says, consider your ways and you so much bring in the, the energy you put out is supposed to bring back to you. Okay, it's supposed to benefit you. But if it's, if, if it's, if it's not doing that, then it's technically draining from you, right? So your whole youth, your strength and all that is wasted. Unless you got the time and the money. You know what I'm saying? That's vexing. 
that, that pisses me off. Okay, man, when the scripture says that we are like the grass, okay, flowers to shine a minute, then eventually we wither away. That's us. But we got that reset coming. Okay, you know, so we're gonna get to live forever and actually experience what life really is. Add to that, like Esau got his torment, he said. The Heavenly Father got his spiritual, he said. This is going to uh, really set everything to right, man. What this devil's going to do is going to set everything off course. And everything is off course as it is right now. So the devil's going to make everything go off course. You know? But that's why, you know, man, how much me outside, we sense this place, man. We are going to go back to our God and be able to live forever, man. You know, like the brother going into, man. Be able to live a million years old and have so much experience, man. Have so many, uh, so much knowledge, man. Because knowledge is power, man. You know? Because you can be the biggest, bumpiest guy, strangest guy in the gym, but you outside of it don't know shit, man. But the, the, the mind is where it's all at, man. Because what kind of man would you be without no knowledge? You would just be a fool, man. You know, and of course we're gonna have children and kids. They don't wanna hear the stories, man. They wanna hear the knowledge, man. Well who do you think the knowledge will be coming to? Coming from us, man. Coming from the Lord, man. You know? So that's why man, the Lord is going to reset us, man. You know? It also allows us to say, Because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that has lo has love, with all them that has hated. I will even gather them around about against thee and will, and will discover thy nakedness unto them. Right, the Lord is talking to us as his woman because we play 